Hi, thanks for joining the CF Engine webinar on Vagrant. In case you haven't heard of Vagrant, Vagrant is a tool to make working with development environments easy. More importantly, it allows you to make these environments portable and disposable. Um, Mitchell Hashimoto is the original creator. You can follow him on Twitter at Mitchell H. And you can go and download Vagrant at vagrantup.com. It can provide a common environment that anybody can work from. It doesn't matter if it's designers, operators, QA, developers. Um, if they're running Windows, Mac, or Linux, and they have a need for a test environment, Vagrant could be useful to them. Vagrant allows you to create an environment once, encode it in a single text file, and then share it with other people. This could live right alongside your source control repository for your project. Um, to give you a test environment that lives, you know, its definition is defined right with um, everything else about the infrastructure. Um, gives you a great way to have this test environment up in, in minutes or hours instead of days or weeks. <clears throat> I said it's portable. Um, originally, that portability came from the fact that you would take it with you. Um, originally, Vagrant only worked with VirtualBox, uh, but since 1.1, that limitation has been removed. And now, in addition to VirtualBox, you can use um, other providers. There are providers out there for AWS, VMware, LXC, KVM. Um, now that it's pluggable, you can, there's really no limit to um, what hypervisors it could support. So how can Vagrant help? Um, one area where it can be really useful is developer onboarding. When you have a new hire, instead of that new hire spending days configuring their new development environment on their new workstation, um, they could just simply download the Vagrant file and run Vagrant up. And in a few minutes, they could have uh, fully working multi-VM test environment they could develop with. And so these, these, these environments could look exactly or as much as possible like um, your, production, your production infrastructure as possible. Um, seeing Vagrant used pretty commonly in QA and build environments nice to be able to spin up a fresh operating system instance as part of your build process and um, complete a bunch of tests. There's a Jenkins plugin for it and Travis CI <clears throat> uses Vagrant to auto help automate testing for a lot of open source projects. I also use it for doing ad hoc demos, um, things where I want to show somebody something and I need a clean environment. I can, I can just do that only takes a minute. Um, reproducing bugs in somebody else's environment. Um, I don't have to have long running instances um, with old versions of software. I can just quickly bring up a fresh instance with the old version of software. And then instead of toting around hundreds of megabytes of these virtual machines with me, I can, I can continue to carry around the spec for the virtual environment. The vagrant file is only a few K, and if I had some extra supporting materials, it's probably just a few megabytes um, to have lots of different possibilities for different environments that I need at any time, being able to quickly spin them up, spin them down, and not have to worry about retaining something that's inside this uh, of a bunch of VMs. <clears throat> Vagrant's also really extensible. Um, it has a plugin architecture so that you can add um, new providers um, and new provisioners. Uh, provisioners are what um, take over after Vagrant has brought up the environment and they'll assist you in um, automatically configuring things inside of the environment. 
I, mean, I found that using Vagrant really shortens the feedback loop when I'm testing instead of having to go spin up an environment or request an environment from somebody who manages other resources. I can quickly just bring up a, two or three machines on my laptop. Um, they can talk to each other. I can have their configuration separated from the virtual machine so that then I can reproduce it and hand it off to somebody else. They can just run one command, have their test environment, and me run it. Um, it's really nice that people don't have to necessarily then, you know, you need to give somebody else access to this environment to debug something. Um, they don't have to have network access into your environment. You can just give it to them and they can bring it up locally and you don't have to worry about low latent or latent links or um, connectivity issues. Have the, the, the ability to do these kinds of tests on plane. <clears throat> so what's Vagrant made of? Vagrant's written in Ruby. Um, the Vagrant file itself is just Ruby, but you don't really need to know Ruby to use it. Most of the Vagrant file is a simple variable assignment. In fact, we can take a look at Vagrant file that we're going to use for the demo. So every virtual environment requires a base box to build off of. This is a uh, predefined operating system install. You know, if you don't have this box cached on your machine, you can optionally have a configuration to go download it from somewhere. Um, I took advantage of fact that um, the configuration file is just Ruby and I have a dynamic mode configuration in here. I've got a few shell scripts that run during provisioning um, to install a CF engine key so I don't have to require network access to complete a demo and to set up a few package readers just for the demo. I'm using the CF engine provisioner inside of this Vagrant file to make sure that CF Engine gets installed into newly instantiated images so that I don't have to build custom images that contain CF Engine. I can use just a vanilla image and CF Engine will get installed from the repository configured and bootstrap to the policy server that's configured. Um, I also have a synchronized folder for my master files. This allows me to edit um, from outside the virtual environment with the editors and tools that I'm familiar and custom with in my environment that's already configured. Um, and then it's automatically synchronized over to the policy server and then distributed to other clients. And the rest of this is just um, some of the things around getting multiple nodes based on this configuration setting here. So again, um, the CF Engine Provisioner is currently undocumented. These are the options that exist for it currently. Um, I pulled these from the source code. This is a great opportunity to contribute if you're interested in Vagrant or CF Engine or both. Um, I'm sure Mitchell would appreciate some assistance with documentation here. Um, lots of flexibility in this. It's really simple. Um, since you don't have to have an image that's pre-baked with CF Engine, um, there's a lot of options here around um, the repository that you're installing from, the package name that you're installing, um, what package manager file you're going to use to configure this external repository to install from, whether or not to bootstrap additional classes that can be defined when running CF Agent um, policy server address so that it can be bootstrapped to it. And then there's also the ability to supply just extra agent arguments, um, but also the ability to have a standalone policy file that is uploaded and then executed. Um, sometimes that is um, useful in setting up or reproducing test environments where you need to get it to a certain way, but you don't need to keep it that way. 
So just kind of a one-shot um, policy type of thing. And again, here's an example of using the TF Engine provisioner. So I mentioned boxes. Every Vagrant environment must have a base box, at least one base box defined. Base box is a this is the base operating system image to start from. Um, they're provider specific, so you need to have the base box that works for the provider that you're targeting. Um, this vagrant box.es has um, a pretty extensive list of mostly virtual box base boxes, uh, but there are some other base box alternatives there. You can also build your own using tools like Vue or Packer. Um, this allows you to use the same infrastructure that you're already using on your physical, the same infrastructure you're using for your physical hardware to, to be provisioned. So you can use the same or very similar kickstarts, pre-seed, post-install scripts um, to automate the you know, initial setup or complete configuration of your, your virtual machine images that you would spin up in your, your vagrant environment. There's some um, magic that happens with Vagrant, um, just to make things nice to work with, especially in a multi-VM environment. When you spin up a environment, it automatically figures out ports to forward for SSH through to the virtual machines, and it uses a, uh, by default, it'll use a, a publicly known insecure SSH key just so that it makes it super easy. If you want, you can always replace that with your own private SSH keys. It also automatically mounts um, the Vagrant project directory, which is the directory in which the Vagrant file exists as a shared folder on slash Vagrant. This gives you an instant um, shared file system between multiple VMs and your host. It gives you the ability to edit files from your desktop and let the virtual machine pick those changes up without you ever having to enter um, that environment. Of course, you can also define other custom port forwards or um, shared folders. Uh, if you want to forward through your web application or something like that, it's absolutely possible in a common, um, common configuration. So getting started with Vagrant is pretty easy. Um, these are most of the commands that um, you would use. For daily use, uh, Vagrant up, and then some form of a, of a stop command. So destroy will remove the Vagrant environment, all the VMs. Um, halt will just shut them down, and suspend will just suspend them. Um, from any of these previous states, if you run Vagrant up, it'll either recreate the environment, boot up the machine, or unsuspend the machine. So I've already got a Vagrant environment up and running. I've got two hosts running and one that's not yet created. So I'll just go ahead and run Vagrant up so that that'll be ready for us in a couple minutes. See that it saw that the hub and node one were already up. And now it's inputting the base box on node two, setting up port forwards and booting the operating system. So this is pretty awesome. We run one command and we get uh, a few virtual machines up and running that we can start playing with. Um, there can be too much of a good thing. You, you might be tempted to build base boxes for all of your environments. Um, and while that might be a really good idea, it's important to remember why um, golden images and like the pitfalls of golden images. The nice, um, there, there are definite advantages to using images. You can get up and going quicker. Um, it's easier to distribute. Um, 
to other people. But um, if you're not careful, um, those virtual machines can turn into big um, black holes. Um, the nice thing about Vagrant is that Vagrant has the provisioners as plugins. This allows you to basically take a completely vanilla generic VM and have it completely automated just like you would your normal um, production infrastructure um, all the way to working applications. Now this also gives you a good way to test the policies that you're using in production. You use the same policies in production as the developers use on their environment. It'll really help decrease the number of it works on my workstation um, type of uh, complaints that we hear when things don't work in another environment. It really allows us to keep the environment the same. And then you can take advantage of the benefits of having these um, images that have you know, partial configuration done, but then still completely under um, management. You could also use any of these provisioning tools to um, along with GUI or Packer.io to automate the building of your base boxes that have um, pre-installed software and maybe much of the configuration done. So that when you spin up a new instance, instead of taking 10 or 15 minutes to install the software, get configured, um, it's already mostly configured and there may be just a few runs that need to prep anything that has, has maybe changed since the last time um, one of the base images was built. <clears throat> so let's take a look at this test environment again. This um, node 2 is already up. It took a little under two minutes to bring up this VM. I've already got another window ready. Let's uh, <clears throat> look at some This is the directory that I have synchronized with Masterpies. So right now I have um, Vim Enhanced, Vim Common, Emacs Common, and Emacs Interacts all disallowed on these systems. And you can see that each one of the hosts. And then we have Vim Minimal installed. So this is an example of uh, doing some policy development. I'm going to go ahead and disallow Emacs no X, Emacs common, um, but require Vim enhanced. So we'll go ahead and save that. So we'll go ahead and log into Go ahead and go ahead and install Emacs here manually. So you can see that Vim Enhanced got installed. On the head. In the next minute or so, you should see Vim Enhanced be installed on node one, and oops, node two has Emacs removed and Vim Enhanced installed. And there we go. Vim Enhanced also got installed on Node 1. Now, if I want to switch over and use Emacs instead, just go ahead and switch it up, make Vim Enhanced the disallowed package, and make the required packages Emacs Common and Emacs No X. 
now in a minute or so we should see that uh, Vim Enhance will get removed and that the Emacs packages will be installed. Let's see that Emacs got installed and Vim Enhance got uninstalled on node 2. There we go, Emacs installed on node 1. Vim Enhance is removed. There is Vim Enhance getting removed and Emacs getting installed. Okay. <clears throat> and now that we're done testing on our environment, we can exit out of these hosts. See that all three are running. And now that we're done, we can throw them away, get rid of them. Gonna go ahead and destroy node one and node two. See that I've got three defined. Two are not created because I destroyed them. And then the hub is running. It would be really easy just to just gonna go ahead and clean up the rest of the environment. Um, of course, it's super easy. I could just vagrant up and I would have the machines in the same same working state. Since the policy hasn't changed, the hub would be bootstrapped to itself. You would get the policy from the shared folder. And then as the nodes came up and they would bootstrap to the hub, they would get the policy distributed to them and they would all have Emacs installed and then unenhanced would be maintained if it's not installed. All working. That's what we did. <clears throat> we uh, just played around with some adding and removing of packages to show an example of using a vagrant environment to um, develop CF Engine policy. I also wanted to be sure to mention um, books. Um, Diego Zamboni's great um, learning CF Engine theory book, highly recommend. Um, I'm not quite Finish reading Vagrant up and running. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, you don't have to know anything about Vagrant to get going. And in the later chapters, um, there's information about um, building plugins. So it really does uh, run the gamut. Um, I'd recommend it as well. With that, um, I think we'll take some questions or a discussion. Let me see if anybody had any comments or questions about um, using Vagrant. With CF Engine. Great, thank you, Nick. Um, let's see. If you have any questions, please put them either in the chat window or the Q and A window below, and um, we will take them and have Nick and Diego answer the questions. Uh, the first one I have: uh, Can you use this to install CF Engine? Can you use Vagrant to install CF Engine? Yes, the uh, the, Vag the CF Engine provisioner in Vagrant actually will take care of installing um, installing CF Engine from um, a repository that you pointed to, and that defaults to uh, our CF Engine community repository. Also, um, I guess I should also mention that um, installing CF Engine Enterprise is not currently possible through the provisioner. Um, we have to make a couple of more changes, uh, submit a couple patches um, to make installing CF Engine Enterprise possible through the provisioner. Um, but um, with the use of one of the shell provisioners, um, you can get that part taken care of. And we actually have a CF Engine Enterprise Vagrant environment that you can grab from our website Vagrant up and, and have a, a working install with. So I'd encourage everybody to check that out. The next Thanks. question I have, Nick, is with regards to using a single Vagrant file with multiple um, cloud providers. Is that possible? <clears throat> yes. Um, you can use a single Vagrant file um, with multiple providers at the same time. 
Um, there are a few videos online uh, Mitchell has posted where he does that. Um, kind of a neat, it's kind of an interesting use case, um, being able to you know spin up pieces of your environment out on AWS, and then maybe a couple other pieces just local to your laptop. Um, but that's completely possible. Yes. And the next question I have coming in is, um, can you use multiple provisioners at the same time? And I think you actually mentioned, you actually listed several. But if you'd like to comment on that in more detail, that would be great. Sure. Mm, yes, you can You can combine multiple for provisioners at the same time. Uh, we actually do that. Um, actually, we don't do that in our enterprise data install. Um, yes, you can combine multiple provisioners at the same time. And you can order them just by the way that you order them in your um, in your vagrant file. So if you need a couple of shell scripts to run first uh, before the CF engine provisioner, um, you can just put them before the CF engine provisioner. And if you want them to run after the CF engine provisioner, you could put them after your CF engine provisioner definition. Also, if you wanted to mix and match in um, any of the other available provisioners, that would also work. Great. If there are any other questions, please add them to the chat window, and um, I will get them over to Nick and Diego. Um, Diego, do you have anything else to add? Um, no, I just I just want to reiterate what um, Nick said in the in the presentation. Uh, Vagrant is is a very powerful tool, not only for development and testing, which was its initial set of applications, but now that it supports um, deployment of virtual machines to Amazon EC2 or VMware or other infrastructures. It's also a very useful tool for uh, deploying production systems and, uh, and your real infrastructure, so to, so to speak. Please visit our website for future webinars under upcoming events. Um, we have a number of them coming up, and we'd love to see you online again. Thank you for coming out. Um, and joining us this morning. Um, I'll turn it over to Nick and, and Diego for any final comments, and then um, we'll uh, call it an event for today. Um, yes, I don't have any other comments. If there aren't um, any other questions right now, if you guys do think of any questions, feel free to shoot us an email, look us up on IRC, or in the CF Engine help list. Thanks for coming. Um, on my side, I'd like to, uh, as well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, we there, there are a num large number of uh, Vagrant-related resources. Uh, there's a very active mailing list if you want to participate in that. We have under the CF Engine GitHub account a number of uh, uh, sample projects for using Vagrant with CF Engine and some other resources. We are uh, developing a Vagrant infrastructure for uh, testing CF Engine and for testing the CF Engine Design Center. And also, we have on our website a Vagrant project that you can download that installs CF Engine Enterprise automatically for you, sets it up, leaves it ready for you to test. So if you go to cfengine.com slash enterprise, you can find from there the link to this guide that will tell you what to download, what to run, and uh, ultimately you just run Vagrant up, the command that Nick showed during the presentation, and you have a few minutes later uh, an up and running instance of the CF Engine Enterprise with a free 25 nodes uh, version. So that's uh, that's an easy way for trying out uh, CF Engine Enterprise if you want to take a look. And uh, beyond that, I'd just like to thank you again for joining us and uh, have a good day. Great. Thank you all.